kegs. Yeah. Calvary, oh yes, no, he's gonna have to make an appearance. He's gonna be so un unhappy about this. What a foolish man in the courtroom. Yeah. Yeah, hey Tommy, looking good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the old copy. All right, gang, here we are in the cold brew section here with Sam, and he's gonna run through the process of making cold brew. No worries. So, cold brew is basically like hot coffee for cold. Okay. So, um, nothing particularly um, extraordinary about it other than that we don't let the coffee get above five degrees when it's brewing. Okay. Um, and the reason we do this is because when coffee brews cold, you manage to extract all of the flavor all of the acidity and the sweetness, but none of the bitterness at all. And so cold brew coffee is super smooth, super fruity, and really, really refreshing. Um, and we love offering it to our customers and just quietly drinking it ourselves. It's amazing. Yeah. So what's this in front of us? Um, so this is one of our vats. So we have what you consider a micro, micro brewery for our cold brew. So compared to say your local craft brewery, we're doing tiny batches, 200 liters at a time. Um, uh, but that's so that we can do lots of different products. Um, any of our blends, any of our single origins, and really give our customers a bit of variety. Uh, and the process is pretty simple. It's coffee and water. Oh, really? um, and so uh, we'll get uh, freshly ground coffee and we'll put it in big, um, specially designed sort of paper filter bags um, and uh, grind it quite, quite coarse. Um, make sure that we soak it well with water before we tie them up and then strategically place them inside the brewing chamber, fill it to the top with water to the desired level and chuck it in the cool room and uh, come back 48 hours later, and uh, hopefully we've got some cold brew that we can uh, filter out. So. And so we've got some of your products here. Yeah. What are the products and how do they taste different? So the really cool thing about our cold brew is that in true Australian fashion, we put it into goon bags. <laughs> Amazing. So uh, fully recyclable. Um, we actually have a special machine that allows us to bag it into goon bags before we chuck it into a box and put it in the fridge. Um, and the great thing is you get a lot more shelf life out of this, so we don't actually have to put any preservatives, anything like that in it. It's 100% just cold brewed coffee. Um, and then, uh, yeah, when you're ready to have it, just click it open, pull the tap, and you've got cold brew on tap. Um, and for those with um, keg systems at home, we even uh, have um, special uh, kegging systems that you can plug into any standard beer system. Um, and so you can actually have cold brew draft, which is uh, pretty tasty too. So you can get that at our cafe. Um, and we encourage anyone who's looking to do it commercially to up, upsize to that, which is much more efficient. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty tasty as well. Very good. Now, I wanted to ask you a few questions. As you look through your journey, what were some of the common mistakes, not only in the cold brew section, but even in the roasting section, what were some mistakes that you made that you wish that you hadn't? Oh man, so, so, so many mistakes. Oh. Um, look, I think one great thing that we probably didn't anticipate for was success. Right. So we were all trying to make sure that we could mitigate any failures, but didn't really think about the failure of succeeding and then not being ready to take advantage of that growth or um, have the infrastructure in place to actually um, kind of like produce as much product as there was demand for. And so pretty much from day one, uh, where um, demand out, outgrew and outstripped our ability to deliver, um, we've been chasing our tail. And so, you know, it took us a little while to figure out exactly what we needed. But since then, um, I often say our roastery and our cafe became sort of Frankenstein's roastery because we we're adding bits on as we needed them, as opposed to having that system in place from the start. And so uh, when we moved into the facility where we are now, we made sure that we scaled it so that if we did get busier, we were ready to go. Um, but that did take a few years for us to figure that out. Okay. And is there any lesson that you learned now throughout your whole journey that if you had known it back then, you would have helped speed up your progress? Um, yeah, well, definitely scalability is one. Right. But then I think as well, um, just the way that we would engage with our wholesale customers. So when we started, we were quite small and we tried to figure out how to be everything to everyone in an effort to win people. And I think the the longer we've been trading, the more we've realized that we actually want to find our people and people who align with our values and what we do and want our product. Because the reality is you can't please everybody. And more importantly, if you try to, you'll probably end up pissing off people who really loved who you were originally anyway. And so I think we've really stuck to our guns. Yeah. Um, it's about great coffee, 
great service, but also not taking ourselves too seriously. Um, and anyone who wants to get around, you know, ethically sourced coffee um, and have a close connection with their farmer and their and the coffee roaster, um, they're there for us. Um, and it might cost slightly more, but surprisingly not, not that much more. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of enjoy every single bit of the process rather than just racing to the bottom and you know trying to make as much money as quickly as you can without going broke, which is uh, not really our style. Yeah. So. Very good. Now in the next segment, we are going to learn Sam's top three tips if you're looking to become a roaster. Hey, I'm Sam Keck, owner of Common Folk Coffee Company. Um, and these are my tips for opening up a roastery. Tip number one, learn the bean. Understand how to taste it, evaluate it, and judge it. There's a lot of coffee out there that's not very good, and there's a lot of coffee out there that's delicious. You'll want to know the difference between the two. So start drinking as much coffee as you can. Tip number two, get to origin, meet some farmers. So much of what goes into making this stuff great happens overseas. So you need to buy yourself a plane ticket to Brazil and go and meet some people who actually make the magic happen. And tip number three, learn to delegate. Coffee is a huge industry and there's gonna be a lot of things that other people are better at than you. And if you wanna run a successful roastery, you're gonna to need to spread the load out. So go and find people who do what you don't do well and invite them to join you on your journey. That's my tips and best of luck with what you do next. All right, Dreamers, I hope you had an amazing day here at Common Folk Coffee. We got to learn the art of coffee roasting with Sam. We'll catch you on the next episode.